let's talk about boss fights. They come in many different forms, depending on what kind of game they're in. They can be long, short, big, small, simple, or complicated. But in this video, we're going to go over my favorite way to do a boss, in which we randomly pick attack patterns from a pre-made list, for which I use three numbers, or variables. Health, for the boss. Progression, which is a number that goes up as the boss loses health, so you can know when to add mechanics or have a second phase. And a third, called behaviors, which is used to pick from that list that I mentioned earlier. So let me show you how we pick which attack pattern gets used. So here in the event sheet we have this section for behaviors. If I open one up, you'll see that I'm using a bunch of tweens in conjunction with wait actions to tell the boss to go to different points that I've put in the game. I'm using these coin objects as waypoint markers so I can send the boss around the level and create these patterns. In this pattern, the boss is tweening to the leftmost coin and then going to the coin farthest right before returning back to the center. And with all of these patterns, the boss is going to come back to the center point, so I'll know where the boss starts. And then finally, we're changing this object variable back to zero. And that object variable is what's being used to pick which pattern is done. So when a behavior is finished, that variable is set back to zero, which will then be used to randomize the behavior with this event, where we change that object variable, behavior, to equal random in range one to this object variable called progression. And progression is what's being done as we damage the boss. So when the boss is on full health, none of these events are triggered, so the progression variable stays at one. So when this event triggers, the game picks between one and one which means the first behavior will just repeat over and over and over again. But if we take this object variable called health down to four by picking up two of these crystal objects, then we add one to the variable progression. Now, when this randomizer event tries to pick which behavior it's going to do, it picks between one and two because now the progression variable is two, which means now it's able to pick between this first behavior or the second behavior. And this second behavior looks like this. But when this series of actions finishes, it again sets that variable to zero to start the process over again. And then if we pick up two more crystal objects and take the health down two more, so we trigger this event, we add one more to the progression variable. So now it's three. Now we're able to pick between one, two, or three. And again, when that series of actions finishes, the boss will go back to the center point and change the behavior variable to zero. But then finally, if I pick up the last remaining crystals and take its health all the way down to zero, we set the behavior variable to a number that's not going to be used for anything else other than the death event. How you want to do the actual behaviors or death animation, that's all up to you. Personally, I like to use this system where you place waypoint markers within a fixed level so you can create complicated patterns just using tweens and the wait action. But this is just a system for picking between those behaviors so your boss can have a little more variety and get more complicated as they lose more health. Now, if you want to learn some extensions that will help you make your game better and faster, check out this video for the top 10 extensions in GDevelop.